Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me set up here. How many of you are happy when they say, let's go to the house of the Lord? Yes, sir. I am. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just bow our heads in prayer just quickly. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. We give you thanks. We thank you for another opportunity of coming before in your presence, O oh God. Father, Lord, even as we sang this morning, you are the reason that we're alive. There are people that started the year, Lord, but they're not here. And we have gone through the first month already, and we're already in the second month, Lord. It is only your grace that is keeping us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you because of joy overflow in our lives Amen. we thank you O oh god because our confidence is in you Amen. father lord we thank you everlasting father lord for everything that you're doing in our lives and we're praying that even as your word goes forth that you will teach us to fear you in jesus name Amen. lord we pray that you will have your way in our lives father lord we keep the covenant oh god that you have given to us that's the covenant of jesus dying on the cross of calvary for us everlasting father lord we pray that the blood of jesus will atone for us in jesus name have your way oh god even as we go into your word today holy spirit we pray that you will speak to our hearts speak to our souls speak to our spirits and do something new in our lives in jesus name be thou exalted and be thou glorified in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? We started the year. We're already in February. Before you know it, February is over. And we're moving to March. God is the one that has given us life. And we are all here because of a reason. We're here for a purpose. This year, we have already been, God has been blessing us with a lot of messages from his presence. We started off the year building on the rock, and this year we'll build on the rock in Jesus' name. We will not build on sinking sand. You know, all of that grounds is sinking sand, but Jesus is the rock. And then we went forward and uh, we started the series that's um, activating the ministry of the angelic. I started that on the second Sunday of the year. I couldn't finish it. Praise the Lord. Except if you all were willing to stay for a three-hour service. Are you people ready for a three-hour service today? Or the church, will, the church will empty out? No, 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 no. I, w I won't be here for three hours. Praise the Lord. But um, last week, um, we pastor, or last two weeks, pastor took us and, you know, taught us about lifted by God. God will lift us up in 2024 in Jesus' name. And we saw a theme verse for the year, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 7 to 8. I'm not going to go into that. Pastor has already taught us all that, and God will lift us up in Jesus' name. And then last week, he also spoke about clay in the potter's hands. So today, I'm going to continue from my message where I start. Praise the Lord. So um, activating the ministry of the angelic. I know you'd be wondering why this kind of message. Um, I didn't really find too many people preaching this message, but a lot of times as Christians, we spend our time, you know, talking about the devil. You know, demons did this, the devil did this. You know, but I started asking myself: Is it just the demons and the devils and all that? Did God not give us assistance? So that's what made me. I started saying, okay, God gave us some kind of assistance to support us as we are doing his work, as we are going out to evangelize and do what, or even just living life. God gave us his assistance through the expressions of himself through his, his angels. So um, last two, three weeks when we started this message, uh, we saw something that happened to Elisha. Elisha was on, I think it was on a mountain, and they came to, some soldiers came to capture him. Instead of panicking in that particular situation, what did he do? He just remained quiet. But his servant was the one that was seriously panicking. So he was not concerned. He didn't, a lot of us, if we are surrounded, let's take it some, 
soldiers come here now and surround us. We'll start praying, oh God, deliver. He wasn't even looking at that because he, he was seeing beyond. His perspective was different. So he was more concerned about his servant. And that is why he said that God should open the eyes of his servant. So our persp I'm going to summarize everything I talked about three weeks ago. So our perspective makes all the difference. So we need to pray that God will change our perspectives in 2024 because those that are with us are greater than those that are with in, in the world. Praise the Lord. So our God is Jehovah Sabbath, which means what? The Lord of hosts. Jehovah, Jesus is also Jehovah Sabbath. Why? Because he is our redeemer. Our Lord Jesus is our redeemer. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 4, for as for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. So Jesus is the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. And I love that song whenever they sing it about, I don't, I'm not in the choir, but you know, the one that they say saluting our, our general. Praise the Lord. I don't know what's the song, but I'll leave the singing to the choir. Praise the Lord. So, but it, whenever I hear that, it entrails my heart because. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. Over and over, we see it in the Bible. He defeated the, defeated the forces of Satan um, through sicknesses that he healed, people he raised from the dead. He, was, he even had power over death. So we are serving a covenant-keeping God who is our Redeemer, his Jehovah Sabbath, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we ask ourselves, you know, who are angels? You know, we're talking about angels, you know, um, activating the ministry of the angelic. We looked at it uh, last three weeks. Angels are ministering spirits. You know, they, they are created. Those are things that we studied. They are, I'm not going into it. I'm just summarizing. They are created. They are not independent of God. They are an expression of God. You know, if an angel appears, or you see an angel, a lot of times in the Bible when we read about them, they appear and they're so bright. Why? Because they're coming from the presence of God. You know, they emanate from God. Praise the Lord. And he's a consuming fire. That's why when Elijah was taken, the Bible says a chariot of fire came and just whisked him away. So because they are in the presence of the consuming fire. They're, they're in the presence of God. And that is who they are. They emanate from God. So they are not independent of God. They are of, uh, uh, they are of higher order than human beings. As we see in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 7. I'm not going to read that. They are also ranked. They are ranked in the, they have different functions. You know, the orphanims, the throne, you know, the ones that are full of eyes, the ones that look like humans, they are ranked. They are in the Bible and they are free willed and they are very knowledgeable. They are free willed in the sense that they are not robots, they are not AI. They have a choice of their own. And that is why the devil, when he was the shining one in heaven, the covering cherub, he was able to convince a third of the angels in heaven. That means they had a will. They could make choices. They made choices. One third of them chose to go with him. And they realized they had made a mistake because Michael now stood up with the two thirds and there was battle in heaven. And they had to cast them all out and they have a place that they are going to. I, I, that's why, you know, when Jesus Christ came to the man with the legion of demons and, and all that, you know, they cried out and they said, they saw him, they saw God personified as human, and they were afraid. And they said, have you come to torment us? Or have you come to, how did he even put it? Have you come to, you know, destroy us before our time? I'm just paraphrasing. And all that. Because... They knew what they did. There's no repentance for them. We have an opportunity for repentance as humans because God has made a way for us. But we cannot take him for granted and we need to live for him in Jesus' name. So they are free will. And what were the functions? There could be more. But some of the functions that I looked at three weeks ago, Ministry of Reconciliation. You know, they give us indirect support. They are not going to come down and preach. That's your duty. That's your duty. That's my duty. Our duty is to preach the gospel. That is what God told us human beings to do. But you see angels across in the Bible. They will always support you. 
they will point out to people that, okay, you need to go talk to that person. They will do all that. So there's indirect support. You see the announcement of John the Baptist, announcement of Jesus. We see angels in Joseph's dream preserve, that's preserving Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of, of the world. The announcement to the shepherds. When they announced to the shepherds, they told them to go to Bethlehem. And when they went over there and they saw Jesus, they went back and they were declaring the goodness of the Lord. So they were the ones speaking and evangelizing as the shepherds. So they help us in the ministry of reconciliation. They help us in the ministry of information. They communicate God's messages to humans. We see uh, angels communicating to Abraham, Moses. We see angels communicating to jo uh, Jacob, Gideon, uh, Daniel, Mary, Joseph, Peter, Paul, etc. There's so many places they give us information. They're in the ministry of information. They give us information of what to do. Another function of what angels do is the ministry of defense and protection. A lot of times you might say that's a near miss, but that's not a near miss. It's the angels of God protecting you. There are some times that you might have swerved into another car. There's a time that you might have run into another car. But God might not, at that particular moment, you were not sharp. But God might have made the person that you would have hit very sharp, and the person pulls away. And things like that. So they, they, they help us in defending us, in protecting us. Angels defend, assist, and protect God's people. Um, ministry of praise and worship. So when people are praising and worshiping God, you are a minister of God because you're joining the angels. It's not a position to play with. Praise the Lord. It's a very dicey situation because that is, this, that, is, that is the ministry that the devil had. Because if we study about Lucifer, you will see that the Bible says the tabrets, the, in fact, musical instruments were built into him. So that is why he, he can sing. Praise the Lord. So don't mess with singing, especially if you're in the, in the choir. You need to be serious with God. It's not just about singing. It's about living a holy life because that was what the devil was doing in heaven. But pride came into him. It's easy to become prideful. Oh, man, I can sing. My voice is like an angel's voice and all that. It gets into your head. Praise the Lord. So yeah. ministry of praise and worship. Angels are constantly praising God and worshiping God, even in heaven. Ministry of purpose fulfillment. You know, angels fulfill God's purposes. That is why uh, they are made. They're an expression of God. And the hope and the thing that God, when, when God created us, he, he, he gave us a, a, a future and he gave us a hope. And the angels of God help us to accomplish those futures and hopes in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, we see the ministry of, I, I call it biospatial navigation. Why? Because bio is life. The angels of the Lord help in positioning us. In 2024, we'll be repositioned if you believe in Jesus' name. Uh, very few people just whisper. They pray. I believe it. That is our team for the year. And the angels of God are ready to reposition us if we believe the word of God. And if we do what God wants us to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So angels are masters in accurate positioning. They provide directions. The ministry of protocols. When you finish your ministry on earth. You know when soldiers are. I love the military. It was when soldiers are parading themselves and all that, they are playing those drums. My brother and my other, my Navy brother there, they're playing the drums, they are marching in their uniforms and all that. When you finish your work here on earth and you did God's work with, you know, gusto and you did everything well, those drums will peal in heaven. Praise the Lord. The angels of God will be there to welcome you. The, the protocol officers, all of them will land. The chariots of fire, just the same way they took Elijah, they will position themselves. The general is coming back. Pray, nobody even said amen. You don't want to rise to that level with God. Praise the Lord. I'm talking to you guys. I said the general is coming back. And man, God is looking for those that he will make generals. You want to make me divert the message, praise the Lord, by keeping quiet. Praise the Lord. God will help us in Jesus' name. They're in the ministry of protocols, and they're also in the ministry of judgment and retribution. 
the angels will execute the judgment of God on evildoers. If you don't accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and serve the Lord, you are among those evildoers. So when they will come to met judgment upon the earth, you will feel their wrath. One angel. How many people did one angel kill in one night? I can't even remember. One, one eighty-five thousand. One angel. So when G man Jesus, in fact, I'll ask him. Why did you exaggerate that much when you said when they said do you know how i'm able to release you and all that look if i if i want i'll ask for 12 legions of angels Seventy-two thousand angels on earth there will be no earth it's true do the math there will be no earth left because they'll wipe out everything on earth and they'll just start all over and god will say in the beginning let us create again the third time praise the lord but it will not be so in jesus name God will help us in Jesus' name. So we have covered two of the five subparts that I had. Jesus is Jehovah Sabaoth. We all looked at that already. And then we looked at the ministry of angels. Who are angels and what do angels do? I just summarized that again. So let's proceed. I don't want to say some things that we're saying in Nigeria. In Nigeria, they will say, when we're joking in campus, we'll say, let us proceed with our proceeding procedure. That's tautology. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to say that. Praise the Lord. The fear of the Lord is their magnet. That's the third point of the message. And we'll look at that today. And we'll look at the uh, fourth point. Voice activates their ministry. And, then and the last one, the fifth point, is testimonies of encounters. The fear of the Lord is their magnet. Psalms chapter 34 and verse 7. Psalms chapter 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them in fact that is that word in camps it's just the, the key word of this whole message in camps around all those that fear him two key words there two key words in camps and the fear of him the fear of the lord the atmosphere you create will determine what you will attract the atmosphere you create determines what you will attract. If you create the atmosphere of the fear of the Lord or the fear of God, the, uh, his angels will encamp around you. However, if you create an atmosphere of sin and rebellion, angels will also surround you. But it will be the fallen angels. Demons will encamp around you and they'll make your life a living hell until they are able to get you into hell yourself. Praise the Lord. So cultivating an atmosphere of fear, of the fear of God, attracts his protective angels. You don't need to do anything. You don't even need to ask. You don't need to say, oh God, send your angels around me. Just fear the Lord. As soon as you fear the Lord, they'll start arriving. Amen. Even though you don't see them, they'll start approaching, they'll start arriving because there is something that is attracting them. Just like nectar, what nectar on a flower, bees are attracted to it because it gives them the product that they use to make what? Honey. And bees love honey. They produce the honey. So if you have honey in you, the Bible says the word of God is like honey. So if you have the word of God in you and you start fearing God and drawing closer to God, you don't even need to pray and say, God, send your angels around me. They will encamp around you. The more you fear God, the more they will keep encamping around you. You become a garrison for them. You become a base for them. Where is our base on earth? We are going to Pastor Dara's house. We are going to our sister's house over there. We are going to that person's house because that is our base on earth. Because you are creating the atmosphere that will sustain them. You are creating the atmosphere of what they understand and what they know. They are coming from the presence of God and they are walking on earth into the presence of God because you fear the Lord. Praise the Lord. So cultivating an atmosphere of the fear of God attracts his protective angels as illustrated in Psalm chapter 34 and verse 7 that I read. An environment marred by sin invites demonic influences. If you mar your life with sin, angels will still come to you. But it will be the fallen angels. They will make you an abode in you. Look at the man with the legion of demons. Legion. A lot. Praise the Lord. So an environment marred with sin invites 
demonic influences, but submission to God repels them. It repels them. As advised in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, I don't think I gave that to the uh, media team, but I'm, I'm just going to read it quickly. It says, um, Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 27, nor give place to the devil. If you give the devil a foothold, he will take your whole body. If you give him a finger, he's going he's gonna to chop off that arm. If you give him a foot, you've lost the whole, in fact, you lose your whole self. So do not give the devil any kind of foothold in your life. James chapter 4 and verse 7, the Bible says, I didn't give that, but I'm just going to read that quickly. That's the only two I didn't give. It says, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. Your daily choices, your daily choices shape your spiritual environment, drawing you closer to God's blessing or further into vulnerability. Whoa, thank you. Thank you so much. That big English. Praise the Lord. Vulnerability. Let me say it slowly before I bite my tongue here. Praise the Lord. So we need to draw closer to God. God wants us to walk in the atmospheres of the angelic. Especially as we fulfill the mandate of the Great Commission. There are some things you can't do. But in fact, you can't, even, you can't even evangelize with your own strength. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the expression of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit expresses himself on earth, even through his angels. As we see, if you read the whole Acts of the Apostles, you see the Holy Spirit expressing himself, even when Peter, you know, that was a very, very funny situation. The church is busy praying. Oh, God, protect Peter. Deliver Peter. And Peter was in jail. And the angel of God actually appears and taps Peter. Okay, let's go. Opens the prison. Opens the prison and says, let's go, let's go. And they leave. And they come to the house. And Rhoda sees Peter and doesn't even open the door. And shuts the door and runs back and says, oh, Peter is here. And says, ah, stop joking. That must be his angel. They say, no, he's here outside. And they scolded him for leaving him outside. Praise the Lord. So God is working. And he's still working in our midst and he'll work in our lives in Jesus' name. So in the Great Commission, we need the power of God. We need the power of God and the angelic presence of God will even walk with us as we accomplish the mandate of God in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, the Bible says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with what? He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus is with us. His angels, guardian angels, they are all surrounding you, even as you go to fulfill the call of the Great Commission. The fear of the Lord creates a heavenly atmosphere that attracts the angelic. So what are some facts? I'm going to look at some things. What are some facts about the fear of the Lord? Remember what we read in Psalm chapter 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. So let's look at two things. What is the fear of the Lord? And the second thing that we're going to look at is how do we cultivate the fear of the Lord? I like to practicalize things. It's not just, you know, preaching a message and we all... You know, we enjoy it or we don't enjoy it. But I like to put down some points that we can practicalize so that our lives will become different. Praise the Lord. So what is the fear of the Lord? Let's get after it. So what is the fear of the Lord? The definition I have of the fear of the Lord is this. It's something I just try to concord based on all the stuff that I've been studying. He said, the fear of the Lord it is a profound reverence and respect for God. That is the foundation for wisdom, ethical conduct, and understanding leading to a life oriented away from evil and towards moral and spiritual fulfillment. That is my definition of the fear of the Lord. It is a profound reverence and respect for God. That is the foundation for wisdom, ethical conduct, and understanding leading to a life oriented away from evil and towards moral and spiritual fulfillment. 
What is the fear of the Lord? Having a profound, it means what? It's having a profound reverence and respect for God. And what does it do? When you have a profound reverence and respect for God, it ushers you into a life of glory, exaltation, gladness, and a crown of rejoicing waiting for you. That is what the fear of the Lord. The profound reverence that you have for God, it will usher you into glory, eventually with him when we leave this earth, into exaltation, into gladness, and a crown of rejoicing. We will receive our crowns in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4, the Bible says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Praise the Lord. So when we fear the Lord, it ushers us into glory. It ushers us into exaltation. It ushers us into gladness. It ushers us into the presence of God where we will receive our crown of rejoicing. Also, the fear of the Lord, which is, I said, is what? A profound reverence and respect for God. What else does he do? It ushers us into an era of long life. If you want to live long, fear the Lord. If you want to live long, fear the Lord. You will live long on earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you will live forever in heaven in Jesus' name. We will do that in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord prolongs days. But the, the, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. It will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So the fear of the Lord, which is a profound reverence and respect for God, will usher us into an era of long life. It will usher us into eternal life eventually. Proverbs chapter 49, verse 27, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death will be turned away from the snares of eternal death in Jesus' name. Amen. The fear of the Lord, which is a profound reverence for God and respect for God, it ushers us into true wealth and every success. We will be launched into true wealth and every success. We pray for that this morning. Praise the Lord. We will be launched into true wealth in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4, the Bible says, it says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Praise the Lord. We will have riches. We will have honor on this earth and forever in heaven in jesus name it ushers us to, uh, it ushers us also into into a life of peace and perfect health proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 to 8 the bible says he said do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil it will be held to your flesh and strength to your bones. We will have health in Jesus' name. It ushers us, which is the fear of the Lord, ushers us into a life of peace and perfect health. It ushers us also into a life of ethical living and discipline. It ushers us into a life of ethical living and discipline. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13, it said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way. And the perverse mouth I hate. That is what God hates. So when we start fearing the Lord, and when we start going deeper in God, God will usher us into a life of ethical living and discipline. Praise the Lord. The fear of the Lord ushers us into an ambience of God's mercy, into an environment of God's mercy. Psalm chapter 103 and verse 11, the Bible says, For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. When you fear the Lord, the mercy of God is all over you. It's pouring over you like the dews even from heaven when we fear God. It ushers us into the solace of his acceptance. It ushers us into the solace of his acceptance. Acts chapter 10 and verse 35, the Bible says, But in every nation 
Whoever fears him and walks righteousness is accepted by him. Praise the Lord. We will be accepted by the Lord in Jesus' name. It ushers us into an atmosphere of the love of God. It ushers us into the atmosphere because God himself is love. And when you fear him, it ushers you into the atmosphere of his love. First John chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love will be made perfect in love in jesus name Amen. let us remember let's remember that in psalm chapter 34 and verse 7 the bible says the angel of the lord does what and comes all around those who fear the lord we have seen the definition of the fear of the lord we have seen kind of like the the benefits of the fear of the Lord, which is uh, the different points that I covered. So the next thing that I said that we're going to look at, we looked at what the fear of the Lord is. We're going to look at how do we cultivate even the fear of the Lord. Because when we begin to fear the Lord, the angels of the Lord, we activate the ministry of the angelic in our lives because they will just start coming and surrounding. And in fact, they will garrison in your life, in your soul, in your spirit, and even in your body. So based on how we have defined the fear of the Lord, I'm going to define it once more. I know it's a little bit complex. It says it is a profound reverence and respect for God that is the foundation for wisdom, ethical conduct, and understanding that leads us or leading leading to a life oriented away from evil and towards moral and spiritual fulfillment so but how can we practically cultivate the fear of the lord even as like i said god has given us a great commission and he wants us to go out to the world and preach the gospel to every every soul and bring them into the kingdom of god but for us to be effective, we need his power because you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall become witnesses. That's one of the key words in that verse, witnesses. When you receive the power of God, you become witnesses so that he can witness through us. So that the Lord witnesses through us. When we become his hands and feet. And he moves with us in accomplishing his will and purpose. And people are saved to the glory and praise of our Lord in Jesus' name. So but how can we practically cultivate the fear of the Lord? I'm going to look at seven things that we need to do to practically cultivate the fear of the Lord. And the first thing, I'm going to read out the list and then I'll start diving into them. By God's grace, I'll finish it all. It said, seeking wisdom and understanding. We cultivate the fear of the Lord by seeking wisdom and understanding. Second point, hate evil and iniquity. Third point, practicing obedience to God's commands. Fourth point, pursuing a deeper knowledge of God. Fifth point, embracing humility and instruction. Sixth point, living righteously and ethically. Seventh point, reflecting on the eternality and omnipresence of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us look at these points. So we cultivate the fear of the Lord by seeking wisdom and understanding. We must begin by actively seeking wisdom as the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. We looked at building on the rock. God, Jesus, is the rock. And he's the foundation and he's also the word of God. So we must study the scriptures and seek godly counsel for wisdom and understanding. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. We need to study God's word. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11 talks about the Berean Christians who... Even after their thoughts, they went back and studied to make sure to know whether if the things that they were receiving was true. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11, the Bible says, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, 
in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. May the Lord help us to study in Jesus' name. Amen. Counsel. We need counsel. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14, it says, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So, Practical steps to cultivating the fear of the Lord is seeking wisdom and understanding. Those, I wrote down here, I said, those who fear the Lord will form true judgments. And like a light, they will kindle righteous deeds. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us to kindle righteous deeds in Jesus' name. So the first point that I just covered here is to cultivate the fear of the Lord, we need to seek wisdom and understanding. The second point that I need to cover here on ways that we can cultivate the fear of the Lord. We can cultivate the fear of the Lord by what? Hating evil and iniquity. Cultivate, you should practically cultivate a dislike for evil by aligning your values and actions to biblical teachings. As you're reading God's word, you align yourself to what you're reading, to the lessons that you're learning, even as the Holy Spirit is prompting you in your heart. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance they, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. So God is telling you what he hates. He said he hates pride, he hates arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth he hates. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 to 15, the Bible says that. It says, do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it, and not travel on it. Turn away from it, and pass on. A lot of times, you, people are just saying, okay, I'm going to go do this, I'll go do that, and... Yeah, they say, oh, yeah, nothing is going to happen to me. Sometimes you're playing tricks with the devil. He's been here longer than you have. When you're stepping into sin and you're saying, oh, nothing is going to happen, he will just trip you. I don't know soccer so that much. I don't know good soccer players that are good defenders. They will trip you well and land you inside that sin well and make sure they find a way to try and kill you before before you can repent from it, praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18, the Bible says, um, it says there, it says, flee sexual immorality, every sin that the, uh, that the man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22, the Bible says, flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So we cultivate the fear of the Lord by hating evil and turning away from iniquity. That was the second thing that I was addressing there. I'm looking at practical ways we can cultivate the fear of the Lord. Because if we practically do these things, we are creating ourselves. In fact, we are increasing our, we are becoming a lodestone in God's presence. A lodestone is a magnet. We are becoming a magnet in God's presence because the angels of the Lord will just be attracted to us. We can cultivate the fear of the Lord in our lives by practicing obedience to God's commands. So it's not just about reading. It's not just about studying. It's not just about hearing. It's not just about listening. We need to act on what we have heard, what we have read, read, and what we have listened to. Praise the Lord. Obedience to God's commands is a practical way to demonstrate your reverence for him. Proverbs 3 and verse 7, the Bible says, it said, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Praise the Lord. And one of the commands that he gave to us that we need to obey, I keep coming back to it, is what? We need to go. So we need to prepare ourselves. We need to be ready in God's presence. We need to be energized to be able to go out there. Going is not a burden. Going is God's favor to you. Because the Bible says that he, those that win souls will shine like the stars of God. You don't want to, yeah, well, you can be a star here on earth too. You get what I'm saying? So far as you have Jesus in your life, but what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You can have all the money in the world. You get what I'm saying? But, and you can use it and serve God. But God wants you to be a star in heaven. You know what it means when you're coming to the prize giving day of God and they're calling your name and they say, call your name and you just rise up. They bring that 
you know, God is a Jew, Jesus is a jeweler too, because every soul you, you win is like a diamond. I don't know the kind of precious stones that diamond is, oh, women love diamonds, right? <laughs> diamonds are the girl's best friend. That's what they say here, but diamond is actually a low quality of what you will see in heaven, because diamond in chemistry is carbon that is squished and squished and squished and squished and before you know it, it starts shining isn't it it's carbon but in heaven there's some stones that you will ha you have never seen i have never seen eyes have not seen nor ears heard what god has prepared for those that love him so if you're a paul and you say okay i'm gonna become paul exponential of five so that I will accomplish what Paul did and do it five times. When they'll call your name, Pastor Dara, or they say, Dara, Ulua Dara, and he walks gallantly. You know how he's jumping here? He'll be jumping up and down. <laughs> In fact, the angels will have to use a lasso and catch him so that gravity doesn't take him away. And he dances and he comes and they will put the crown on his head. He will shake himself and go to his, oh, that's your throne. He will roll and go to his, praise the Lord. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. May we obey the Lord to go because it's a favor for us to serve. And every soul that the Lord saves through you is a star or it's a gem, a heavenly gem that they are putting upon your crown in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, the Bible says, He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Luke chapter 14 and verse 23, the Bible says, then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Why compel? The Bible says, Paul said, knowing therefore the terror of God, we persuade men. God is so loving, but he's also a consuming fire. Don't forget that. He's so loving. He's so patient. That's why sometimes you say, oh, my God, why is God not doing anything? They're killing themselves all over the world and all that. Like God is so silent. You're just talking. If God came yesterday, would you have been ready? So he does that, his patience, so that we can be ready. Praise the Lord. We can cultivate the fear of the Lord Fourth point, by pursuing a deeper knowledge of God, we must actively engage in regular prayer, worship, and scripture study to grow in the knowledge and understanding of God. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is what? Understanding. And then I wrote down here, I said, the whole of wisdom is fear of the Lord. And in all wisdom, that is fulfillment of the law. Praise the Lord. We need to learn, and we need to learn in God's presence, pursuing a deeper knowledge of God. We can cultivate the fear of the Lord. That was the fourth point. We can cultivate the fear of the Lord by embracing humility and instruction. We must humble and willing, and, and we must humble ourselves and be willing to learn from others. We need to have a teachable heart. So some of us that you're trying to teach them something, they say, I know it already. You know, air pride and all that. I know it. Don't tell me nothing. I know it all, you know. Let me not call a political person's name here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you don't know it all. You can learn. You know, recognizing that wisdom comes from instruction. Proverbs 15 and verse 33, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. You need to go lower. Jesus said the same thing. He said that we may decrease that he may increase. So when you humble yourself, he elevates you. When you humble yourself in his presence, he lifts you up. And this year is a year of repositioning. God will take us from the dunghill of our current situation and circumstance, and he'll catapult, cut, um, woo! he'll catapult you. <laughs> he'll catapult you to where he wants you to be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God will reposition us because we will humble ourselves to serve the Lord in Jesus' name. We can cultivate the fear of the Lord by living righteously and ethically. We must make decisions and take actions that reflect ethical and moral integrity. In righteousness, we must make the right choice. 
Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 6. The Bible says, In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. So when we fear the Lord, we depart from evil and begin to live a life that is ethical. An ethical life is a life that does the right thing. Praise the Lord. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Final point. We cultivate the fear of the Lord by reflecting on the eternality and omnipresence of God. We must regularly meditate on his eternal nature and presence in all aspects of our lives. There's a place for meditation and seeking God. I didn't tell you to go do yoga. Praise the Lord. Meditation in his word and in his presence. Psalm chapter 33 and verse 8, the Bible says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the whole world be in awe of him. Meditation in his presence. Standing in his presence. Praying in his presence. Um, meditating on his word. Worship. Prayer. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening. And he lifted his eyes as he was meditating and looked. And there the camels were coming. The camels are coming. The camels was his blessing. It was coming to him because he was meditating in the presence of God. 2024, as we meditate in God's presence, the camels are coming. You lift up your heads in God's presence and you see the camels of your blessing, the camels of your wealth, the camels of your, the retrieval of things that you think you have lost. The camels of God's presence is coming. The camel of your healing, the camel of your knowledge, the camel of your upliftment is coming. But we need to meditate in his presence. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Good success will be a lot in meditating in God's presence in 2024 in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. These actions, these, these action steps, you know, grounded in scripture can guide individuals to developing a deep reverential fear of God in our lives. You know, leading to a life of wisdom, ethical conduct, and spiritual fulfillment. Remember where we read when we started all this. It's Psalm chapter 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. We have seen what the fear of the Lord is. We have seen the benefits and the things that we can get from fearing the Lord. We have also seen the ways that we can practically cultivate the fear of the Lord. So how can we practically cultivate the fear of the Lord Some from the things that we have seen? We have seen seven things. But out of those seven things, there are ten things that we can do. Praise the Lord. I'll point them out very quickly as I'm rounding up even the, the message. It says, seeking wisdom and understanding. What did we touch in seeking wisdom and understanding? Study and counsel. Um, second point, hate, hating evil. The third action step that we have there is fleeing evil. The third thing that we looked at was practicing obedience and God's command. So fourth is, is what it is, obedience. We need to obey what we read and what the Lord teaches us. Pursuing a deeper knowledge of God. What do we gain from here? Regular prayer and worship. The fifth thing that we looked at was embracing humility and instruction. We learned two things there, humility and being teachable, teachability. The sixth point that we saw was living righteously and ethically. We saw something there righteousness the seven points reflecting on the eternality and omnipresence of god we learned something there the tenth thing that we learned was meditation so 10 practical steps to cultivating the fear of the lord that we need to ask god to help us even after this message like we said the angel of the lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them first action step study second action step counsel third action step fleeing from evil fourth action step obedience fifth action step regular prayer sixth action step worship seventh action step humility eighth action step teachability ninth action step that we need to pray into our lives righteousness tenth action step is meditation praise the lord the camels are coming to our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Voice activates their ministry. 
I'll be very quick with this. Psalm chapter 103, verse 20 to 22. Psalm 103, verse 20, 20, uh, verse 20 to 22. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. Not our word, his word. Who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts. He's talking to angels. David knew how to worship. And he was seeing that there's a time in his life that he could not do it himself. And so he was telling the angels of God in heaven to bless God because of all the things that God does. He said, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So angels are not only powerful beings, but they are also attentive and responsive to the word of God. This suggests that when believers speak God's words, they are not merely articulating text. They are invoking the power and the presence of God, which angels are bound to honor and act on. The angels are there to support and help you. But what activates them to effectively act on your behalf is what made them, which is God's word. So when we are praying, I love the fact that when we pray in church, we pray scriptures. Because as you are praying those scriptures, they are acting on it. You don't have to see them acting. You don't even need to tell them, angels, go and act on this word. As soon as you say it, they know what to do already. You don't need to hit your head on the wall. Oh, God, you are the one that teaches my fingers to make wealth and all those. You hit your head on the wall 20 times. No, as you say it, believe it, they act on it. They will act on you don't even need to do they will act on it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this suggests that when believers speak God's word, they are not merely articulating text. That's what I said before. Um, I wrote down something here. It said, when you speak the written word of God, angels stand at attention. Angels is a word, is something I read from a book. He said, angels have a responsibility and are created to respond to his voice. When you speak, declare, pray, worship, or use any other utterance that utilizes the verbalizing of God's written word spoken through your voice, angels are activated. They will be activated on our behalf in Jesus' name. Angels are motivated to serve the heirs of salvation because that's what that's God's word. Hebrews in our text, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 and verse 14. The Bible says there, but to which of his angels has he said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? No angel was told that. That was only told to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are they not all ministering spirits? Sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. So we see that in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 to 14, it further underscores the purpose and the mission of angels as ministering spirits sent to serve those destined for salvation. This indicates that angels have a divinely appointed role in the lives of believers ready to assist protect and facilitate God's purposes on earth. He knows the thought that he thinks towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end, to give you a future, to give you a hope, and to accomplish that, he expresses himself towards you, even uses, using the angelic host even in your life. So expectation is the hallmark of experience. Whether you believe that they exist or you do not believe that they exist, they exist and they are there, and they are there to work for those that believe that they exist. With a lot of people, you, you cannot walk in ignorance. A lot of us, we, like I said, that's what made me start studying this. We celebrate the devil too much. Oh, demons did this. That one that looks like a goat that looks like a chicken, has the leg of a chicken appeared to me today. Oh, that's all we're looking at. No. We need to see what God has given to us. In the realm of Christian faith, expectation can catalyze activating the ministry of angels in your lives. We can see this in scripture. Um, I'm not going to read that, but Acts chapter 12, verse 5 to 15, we see this uh, story I told you about, um, about um, Peter when he was in prison. So your words, as I summarize this part, it says your words charged with faith and spoken in alignment with God's promises are powerful. As you declare God's word, 
over your life and circumstances. You do more than change the atmosphere. You summon the very host of heaven to be on your side. Angels are poised to act, not on every word that is spoken, but specifically on those that echo the heart and the voice of God. So speak God's word. For you to speak God's word, you got to know God's word. So you got to study God's word. You got to draw closer to God through his word. He says, so speak God's word with boldness and faith and watch as the ministry of angels unfolds in your life, bringing about God's will and delivering his promises to you. Remember, your voice infused with the word of God is the key that, uh, that unlocks angelic activity guiding you toward fulfilling your divine destiny praise the lord testimonies of encounters testimonies of encounter i'm not going to spend any time here it says hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4 uh, verse 40 i'm just going to list and mention it says are there not ministering spirits sent to minister to those who will inherit salvation Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, and they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies, for they love not their lives unto death. Praise the Lord. So we see testimonies that is filled in the Bible about angelic encounters. We see it in the life of Abraham. Abraham, I'm not going to read it, Genesis, you can go read it at home. Genesis chapter 18 to, uh, and to chapter 19, angels visited Abraham to announce the birth of his son, Isaac and later to rescue Lot even from Sodom you see angels in the life of Jacob Genesis chapter 28 10 to 19 Jacob dreamed of a ladder an escalator uh, with angels ascending and descending symbolizing God's presence and promises we see angels in the life of Moses Exodus chapter 3 an angel appeared in the burning bush calling Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt Balaam we see angels that was a funny one angel in numbers chapter 22 20, uh, 22 to 20 uh, 35 he says an angel stood in the way as an adversary against balaam who was on his way to curse israel and the donkey started there speaking because the donkey saw even the the angel gideon judges chapter 6 an angel appeared to gideon to call him to save Israel, even from the Midianites. Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 19, 5 to 7, an angel provided food and water to Elijah while he was fleeing from Jezebel. Daniel, Daniel chapter 6 and verse 22, an angel shut the mouth of lions. Lions will be shut, their mouths will be shut, whether it's in the spirit against you in Jesus' name. Their mouths will be shut. An angel shut the mouths of lions in the den to protect Daniel. Zechariah, Luke chapter, that's Zechariah in the New Testament. Luke chapter 1, verse 11 to 20. The angel Gabriel informed Zechariah about the birth of John the Baptist. Mary, Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38, so we can see. There's so much. There's so much you can study. These are all the places I study. Time will fail me. Let me talk like in Hebrews. Time with Hebrews chapter 11. Time will fail me to talk about Zechariah. Time will fail me to talk about Mary. Time will fail me before you guys will stand up and walk away because the time is over to talk about Joseph. Joseph, even the husband of Mary. Time will fail me to talk about Peter. Time will fail me to talk about Paul. Time will fail me to talk about all the other people that I'm going to talk about, but I'll just mention their names. Testimonies of encounters of the modern and modern Christianity. I've been reading a book about John G. Payton, who was the missionary to the New Hebrides Islands, currently the island of Van, I say Vanavatu or Vanatu, I can't even pronounce it, but it's there close to Fiji. God, in so many ways, if you read his testimony, God delivered him from cannibals that were on the island so many times that he was about to be killed. But the people just don't know what happened to them. They will stop. They were about to club him to death. They will just stop. And it was just God just working in his life. It's a good book to read. You see George Mueller. George Mueller lived a life of faith. I love the man. You know, he had an orphanage. And sometimes he didn't have money to buy food. So sometimes he would tell the kids, oh, let's wash the plates. They put all their plates and get ready to eat. But no money, no food. But as they finish saying the grace and praying over the food, empty plates, a baker knocks on the door and say, God told me in my heart to bring this food to you guys and everything. 
They serve the food and they eat. So that is angels of God at work. Charles Spurgeon. Spurgeon reported several incidents of being supernaturally guided to people. You know, he's walking. He was an evangelist. God would tell him, I need you to enter that house and speak to that person. And he walks in. The person is going through some crazy experiences. And that's how people were getting converted because he was listening. Billy Graham, the same thing. He was an uh, American evangelist, if you look at his book, Angels, God's Secret Agents, you see some of the encounters that he had. St. Patrick, um, fifth century missionary to Ireland, you see so many things. So, you also will be among that testimony. Amen. Praise the Lord. There might be a litany of things, you know, chronicles of people that have encountered the power of God through the angelic, but you will be that testimony. Amen. Say, I will be that testimony. Let's stand up on our feet and let's begin to pray. And let's begin to pray and say, Father, help us. Help us. Help us. Begin to pray and begin to pray that God will help you to fear the Lord. Begin to pray that God will help you to fear the Lord. Open your mouth. Do not keep silent. That is the thing that will attract angels into your life. The fear of the Lord. Begin to say, Father, help me to fear you. Help me to fear you, O oh God. Help me to fear you. Help me to fear you. Help me to fear you. Begin to talk to God. Begin to pray and say, Father, help me to study your word. Do not keep silent. Begin to talk to God and say, Father, help me study your word. Help me to listen to the word of counsel. Help me to listen to the word of counsel. Father, help us listen to the word of counsel. Help us to flee from evil in every aspect of our lives. Father, Lord, we are praying that you will help us to be obedient. These are the action steps that we need to pray into our lives so that the angelic will be ignited and begin to work in our lives. Begin to pray that God will give us the grace to regularly pray, not just when we are praying on the phone, not just when we are praying our home but to have an altar personal altar with God a cool of the day at the time that you spend only with God begin to pray and say father help me to pray at all times help me to worship teach me heavenly worship teach me to worship you indeed that my worship will be acceptable even to you and even in your thrones in heaven that you will accept our worship begin to say father Lord make us humble make me humble make me humble every element of pride every seed of pride in our lives begin to pray that God will uproot it even at this time begin to pray that God will make you teachable that God will make you be able to receive the word of instruction even in your life begin to pray that God will give you the grace to walk righteously here on earth begin to pray that God will have his way in your life begin to pray that God will give you a heart of meditation that you will meditate and the camels will be coming with your blessing even in your life open your mouth and talk to God Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you everlasting for the Lord because we are activating the ministry of the angelic O God. And you will help us everlasting, Father, even as we serve you, as we go out into the world to preach the gospel to the nations, everlasting Father. Help us, everlasting God. Strengthen us, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you because we are activating the ministry of the angelic in our lives. Teach us to fear you, O God, because the angel of the Lord encamps all around those that fear him and delivers them. Father, Lord, we are praying that you will help us. Help us to study. Help us to listen to the word of counsel. Help us to flee from evil. Help us to be obedient. Help us to be regular in the place of prayer. Help us to worship you in truth and in spirit, O God. Help us to decrease that you may increase in our lives that we will walk in humility oh God Father Lord help us to be teachable that we will listen to the word of instruction help us oh God to walk in righteousness and help us oh God to be people of meditation and meditating even in your presence and even rejoicing in the in the awesomeness of your glory oh God Father Lord we say let this message not stand against us oh God but Lord help us to practicalize it that the angels of the Lord will begin to encamp around us because we fear you Thank you, Father, because we know that you've heard our prayers. As we go forward into the week, we pray that you will go with us. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. May we share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and message shall follow us all the days of our lives.
and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name.